want to talk to you about Mars in Aries and particularly the Mars retrograde. And the reason I want to talk to you about Mars in Aries is because Mars is in Aries forever in 2020 um, from June 28th until the 6th of January. The reason Mars is there for so long is because of his retrograde, which is begins on the 9th of September and ends on the 14th of November. OK, what does Mars in Aries mean? Well, Mars is very, very strong in Aries. He's in his own sign and uh, Mars is the planet of war, of action, of passion, of uh, strength, of uh, physical action. Of Mars is a great planet for athletes. Uh, for generals, for soldiers, for warriors. Um, it's an important uh, planet. You know, when you, when Mars is in action in your chart, you tend to get things done. You, you um, or it's a great planet for focus. Um, so it's very, very strong for everybody at the moment. It's strong somewhere in your chart and it's strong in the world. OK, Mars is strong in the world, even when he's retrograde. OK, and I was thinking about this. Uh, I've been thinking about this a lot because it's been very evident through the summer how active Mars has been, um, stirring things up. Uh, and this transit of Mars through Aries is super important because it's quite unusual to have something this long. I'll talk about that in a minute. But also because it's making these very harsh aspects to the big planets Saturn, Jupiter, Pluto in Capricorn. OK. Why, how unusual is this? Well, I just was thinking about it. I looked it up. Mars goes retrograde regularly, as you probably know, every couple of years. But he doesn't do it in the same sign all the time, obviously. So the last time that he went retrograde in Aries for any for a long period of time was 1988. Before that, 1973 for a fairly brief period, um, because actually most of that time well, yeah, most of that time he was retrograde in Taurus and 1941. Now, I wanted to talk about the Mars retrograde in 1941 because it's very easy to see in some ways how that worked. Because what happened in 1941, as you know, it's the middle of World War II. It's like the early years of World War II. Uh, depending on who's counting, of course. Um, but there we are. So who's in the war? Is Britain is in the war? Germany is in the war? France has been invaded and overwhelmed. Belgium has been overwhelmed. Um, and Germany has turned her face to Russia and has had an incredible invasion of Russia during the Mars retrograde. So she's Odessa, Kiev fall, the siege of Leningrad, you know, which is was one of the most horrendous periods of the First World War. A lot of people starved to death in the Siege of Leningrad, as well as people dying in battle. Um, so uh, basically, the Germans get to the gates of Moscow at, at, during this period. Meanwhile, there's the Battle of the Atlantic is going on. And this, this is still that America has not not the United States has not entered the war and nor seemingly has Japan. However, what's really happening during that period, which is September to November 1941, is that Japan is planning the attack on Pearl, the sneak attack on Pearl Harbor. And December the 7th, after Mars goes direct, um, boom, Pearl Harbor is bombed um, and uh, the United States enters the war. So what is that telling us? This is <laughs> it's telling us that Mars retrograde uh, is the, and it's Mars in the sign of warriors, right, is the time for strategic planning of sneak attacks, right, among other things. Um, but it's not the time to be going forward with things, but to be planning and, um, but also to be understanding that you're, that other people may be planning to do something when Mars goes direct again, okay? Um, so it, for one thing, the other thing is how quickly, um, uh, the, the Germans overran Russia and they thought 
oh, we've got Russia. You know, we're going to beat the winter. We've got Russia. We're, we're, we're here. We're one. And it seemed like they were going to absolutely crush the Russians. But actually what happened was that they got there very quickly. Russian, the Russian bear was sleeping. Um, but Mars turns, uh, sorry, Mars turns direct. The Russian winter comes and Germany, the German army starts to freeze. And of course, that was pretty much it for Hitler's invasion of Russia. By then, of course, they'd managed to wreak all kinds of havoc, but still. So you may think that you're making gains during a Mars retrograde, but they will not be gains. OK, that's just in a kind of macro sense. So. What to do in a Mars retrograde is one thing. What to do with Mars and Aries. And I would suggest that with this retrograde, which begins on the 9th of September, um, this Mars retrograde is very, uh, there are many, many obstacles during this Mars retrograde because Mars will be making these squares to Capricorn. So I'm I was just glancing down the list of stuff that Mars is about to do. 29th of September, a square to Saturn. 9th of October, square to Pluto. 19th of October, square to Jupiter. 24th of October, square to Pallas. Then square to Pluto again on 23rd of December after going direct. So there's a lot of squares that suggest a lot of obstacles, a lot of uh, wrangling, etc. Um, this is an opportunity to make plans, to find stuff out, to be strategic. Um, and uh, Mars in Aries can be more subtle, more underneath, more, um, and to let go of stuff as well. This is a good time to be letting go of things. The planets that have the power now are, the planet that has the most power now in the next few months is actually Saturn in um, Capricorn, which will go direct in, uh, by the end of September. So Mars retrograde is having this hard aspect to a strong Saturn by the end of the month. And you'll see that the Saturn will win if there's some kind of argument, some kind of battle, um, which is institutions and hierarchies and the old rules. Mars doesn't care about rules at all. Um, except maybe rules of war. I'd have to look into that more. Uh, so I'm just checking when Mars actually goes direct again. It's the 14th of November. Um, and after that, you'll you may see some very quick actions, things happening very fast. Um, also, Mars will be. Um, sorry, at the same time, Jupiter and Pluto will be making this conjunction in uh, in Capricorn also. So there's there's a lot of energy cut that will come out when Mars comes out in November, he bursts back out. And because he's in Aries, it's just it's so much more fiery. And speaking of fire, I mean, you've seen the Mars in Aries it has been these incredible fires all over the place, uh, not just in California, but also down in uh, Argentina, etc. And these fires will continue. They may go down a bit while Mars is retrograde, but I would be very careful again. Uh, in November and that will depend on what part of the world you're in and I would be careful but I mean I want to call, talk about conflagration um, or an argument and belligerence conflict I think this is all part of this Mars squaring these things that's the stuff to be careful about um, during the retrograde be uh, strategic take a step back don't push ahead when but be prepared when Mars goes direct to launch forward with something, to push something ahead. Uh, it's different for everybody, of course, depending on where it is in your chart. But I just want to point out that Mars will stay in Aries until the 6th of January. After Mars goes from Aries into Taurus, though, I, this is also important to point out, he will start making these hard aspects again to those big planets, at least to Saturn and Jupiter, which by then will be in Aquarius. So that's a whole different set of um, ideas, or concepts. Um, but currently, the concepts that we have to think about are these very fiery, 
initiate taking the initiative that Mars wants to do in Aries, but it can't at the moment because of the retrograde, um, in conflict with these very staid old ways, the old ways. Um, so I hope that's helpful. Um, I think it's a very interesting time. And I actually, I mean, I think I would be negligent if I didn't say, I think it's quite a dangerous time. So, you know, take care of yourself.